Hello everyone and welcome to week three of my uh, Patreon update videos. Uh, this week I'm going to try and keep keep it short, shorter than I did last week. Um, I want to keep these snappy. So uh, I'm going to talk a, a bit about what I did on the Inkscape extension manager this week, but um, what I want to do is I want to save the actual like meat of the details to a, uh, a presentation video, something which I hope will be able to be shared and will show off all, all the fe features. Uh, but I still want to walk you through like what I did. So the first thing is last week, I want to give a big shout out to Javier. Uh, me and Javier last weekend um, did a live path effects, live coding session. So what that effectively meant is that we got online, we shared the link so that you guys could come and join us and watch us pro program together. And we kind of like bounced off each other and figured out how to um, Im implement a, an important fix, which is that um, if you've ever used the power stroke or the power pen pencil, which allows you to create these like lovely variable width lines. At the moment um, in Inkscape 1.0, if you select the stroke color or the fill color, they don't change the line color in the way that you expect. So we fixed that by implementing a fill and stroke selector that actually works correctly. Uh, we're going to do it again this weekend because there's some there's still some things to fix, and uh, we'll be able to show off essentially like I think a more natural and more useful uh, uh, power power stroke tool um, that sh you know if if you've not used it do do play play with it it is it is quite fun. Um, the second thing is is that the Inkscape project itself, the, the developer and uh, Vectors teams, both asked me to implement a calendar inside the Inkscape website. This involved just basically making sure that the um, they could add events that could be set to be repeatable and that these items could all be given to them as iCals, right? so they could be added to various calendars. So I spent an entire day programming uh, in a calendar system into the web website. Um, it's basic right now, but if you go to the team's websites, you'll be able to see the calendars uh, that, are, that are there, and you'll be able to track developer team and board and, and vec vec vectors that all have their team me meetings and various other things going on. Hopefully as the time goes on, we'll, we'll polish it more. Um, I did work on uh, fixing regressions that happened with the, with the uh, modifier keys work. This is, allows you to change the shift and control and alt keys when you're modifying things. Uh, Thomas was very kind in, in picking out the errors and helping fix those with code. Uh, big shout out to him. And finally, uh, the, the meat of what I did this week, which is I continued on with the extension manager. Um, so the first task was to get the bootstrap strapping to work properly. Um, so we managed to make it so that it works when you install it, no matter what system it's in. It installs into a virtual env correctly. It does all of the right things that it's supposed to. I did piles of fi fixes in the user interface. Uh, polished it up some more, made sure that installing and searching worked, changed the web method that I used to do that. Because um, I want to make this tool really shine, right? So that people who are used to extensions right now are kind of left in the dust, but this should hopefully make up for that. Uh, the third, the third thing that I did for the extension manager, which I'm going to show off more, is the is the creator tab. Um, I know there are going to be some detractors who say that, like, why would you put a tool that allows you to create packages inside the extension manager? And the reason for that is because I believe there is a lot of legacy um, uh, extensions out there that are basically just an INX file and a Py file. Uh, and so this tool basically allows you to select the INX file. It generates automatically what you need to do. And hopefully you can just fill out the boxes of who made it, what it's called, um, and then click on the create. And it will create the package necessary. And if you're the owner, then you can take that package and upload it to PyPy. Uh, if you're not the owner, you can take that package and just distribute it, distribute the zip file, right? Which is a much more convenient way. And then when you need to, you just press the, the, the install from zip file folder instead. So like we, we, we're covering a lot of bases here and allowing people to uh, kickstart the generation of these packages. Because don't forget, like the packages are gonna be, the, the search is gonna be em empty at first because people are not gonna have their packages on PyPy. Py. 
Um, so that's that's what I've spent a lot of time trying to make sure that I can get this like basic cre creator. Um, thank you very much for to all my new pa pa patrons this this week. Um, please please do continue to tell me what you what you think. Um, tell me what you want in Inkscape. Um, please pass on links to your friends um, because. Uh, we need to make this Inkscape development model more sustainable and with your help and with your contributions we'll be able to do, do that. Thank you very much.